trap, 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 trap. <laughs> With your host, Taino HL. Yeah, 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 Taino L. Uh, Curtis and with you. So, session 24. Uh, man, I've been actually, not only me personally, but several individuals that I know, all right, been actually studying his, um, the brother's work for, you know, years. And without further ado, I just want you, you know, introducing you to our star speaker today, you know, the one and only Dr. Asaru, all right, Asaru, Alim, new Tupac, LB in the building. Welcome, brother. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Brother Tayano. Appreciate you for um, inviting me to come on. All right. And, uh, you know, it's been uh, our circle of moors around Quebec. There, you know, we've been talking, and there have been, you know, Taino, you got to bring uh, Alim Bay, man. You got to bring Alim Bay. So I'm glad, you know, the uh, the forces uh, made it happen. All right. So without further ado, uh, people, um, just so you know, so now we have a session with Alim. We're going to go for an hour discussion with Alim. Then after this, the QA, you know, 45 minutes. But, um, Aleem has a vast knowledge so you know where I'm going to try my best to cover a lot of things all right within that hour so we're going to check you know Aleem uh why he has been called the connector all right teacher of the teachers we're going to ch check as well Qigong all right to uh herbology all right so we're going to navigate in there so before going um you know, going with the first question to Aleem, we just want to give a shout out to Kadira, all right, the Empress. So, yeah, right, right there. So, Kadira, the Empress, all right. So, uh, it's a power couple here. So, shout out to the uh, matriarch. All right, all right. So, Brother Aleem, first of all, shout man. Shout out to you. Oh, salute. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So, first of all, uh, Brother Alim, uh, your nick one of your nicknames is the connector. Yes. Please share to the people because uh, I may not know the origin of it and probably a lot of people. So, uh, what's the origin behind this? Um, approximately over 15 years ago, my wife gave me that nickname of the connector due to the fact that people kept coming to us and saying how I was able to connect the pieces of this puzzle called life together. Um, our existence from off planet to on the planet. And therefore, um, historically, we was able to take this information dating back much further than academia would profess. For example, most of those who deal with academia will not go beyond 300,000 years. Um, it's as if they would be stuck with Zachariah Sinchin's interpretation of the Anunnakians coming down and creating humans or mm -hmm. what is called Lulu. Um, however, um, we have information which that dates back much further than that. Uh, we utilize various books, the books particularly would be called The Forbidden Archaeology by Michael Creedmoor and Richard L. Thompson. And the other book by them would be called A Hidden History of the Human Race. On both of those accounts, those books speaks of our over 2.8 billion, billion year experience upon planet Earth. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we take it as far back as we possibly can. And we're not um, constrained with those academic uh, uh, situations and uh, I guess you can say that particular problem in which that keeps us in a box. Because, you know, biblically, um, uh, just I could say well, probably just 40 years ago, people didn't want to go beyond 6,000 years because that correlated with the time of the Bible. Now they're using Zachariah Ascension's work to not go beyond 300,000 years. And I'm still seeing all that as a problem since we are the original beings on this planet. 
what is our origin and no one else is going to tell our story but us got you i got you all right and uh bro regarding this i'm gonna reserve it for later on you know the whole aspect of um the origin all right and for the individual mm -hmm. like you know several people including myself you know we've been actual recallings and uh, connecting the dots with our galactic voyage all right so i definitely want to address this with you all right uh so that you share your knowledge all right so another shout out here um if i'm not mistaking right uh Bobby Emmett was a big mentor to you, right? Well, he was a um, convincer. <laughs> Me and Bobby started out teaching around the same time, and that was in the mid-80s. Mm. Um, I ended up meeting him about 10 years later in the mid-90s, in 95. And uh, we was on the steps of the Fulton County Library and he said, man, if there was more people doing this like us, man, shit, man, we'd be about to just think in no time. And so I said, all right, Bobby, I'll go back to teach him. Because at the time, my thoughts were to um, go to Atlanta and begin to start making some funds and money for myself and my family. You know, I wasn't necessarily going to teach um, on this level and be on the circuit. However, Bobby on that day convinced me in the summer of 1995 to do this. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing it ever since. Um, even though I was already teaching um, um, in 88, you know, um, you know, classes. And, and at the beginning, I was scared in order to get up in front of an audience. But when I seen there was a necessity in order to get this information out, that fear uh, went away very quickly. And I've never been fearful of getting in front of audiences again in that mm. way. I got you. I got you. All right. And speaking of teaching, so I do want to go back again because uh, like I, when we were talking, right, I did told you that I got to your works when you were in that area in the 90s, end of the 90s, mm. uh, 2000, right? right? So at that time, I remember... Um, there are several lectures, you know, hip hop decoded uh, the metaphysics of Morse. So, um, if the people, for the people that may not know, if you go to Alim's website, uh, Alim's has a lot of formations, you know, uh, before, before, you know, Moorish Temple, you know, uh, the nation goes the earth, right? Right. Uh, right. Before um, the more Science Temple information became um, popular, um, it was. It was um, Hakeem Bay, um, Bobby, Phil Valentine, myself, um, within the uh, mid '90s to, I guess you would say, actually until the early 2000s, uh -huh. in which that um, we begin putting this Moorish information out due to the fact that the prophecy in which that was spoken of by Prophet Ali, that we would. Um, the Moors were coming to their own in the year 2000. So it seemed as if we was on that right timeline to get this information out and been doing so ever since. Gotcha. And please share it to the people, um, Dr. Aline, your path, you know, because um, you're studying several, you know, several right. um, kind of knowledge. Could right. you, you know, probably briefly tell your path and how you came, you know, let's say on the scene and started to, you know, bring awareness to the people. Right. Um, I would go back to um, the age of 12. My godmother's daughter kept telling me about an individual by the name of Malcolm X, mm -hmm. Al-Hajj Malik Al-Shabazz. And I was like, who has the last name X? What is going on here? Um, so she just kept telling me, kept telling me. And so I ended up going down to the Schaumburg Museum or well, library actually, um, on about 134th, 35th street in Harlem, New York. And I took, and I was able to check out a book in which that was known as the autobiography of Malcolm X. 
And that book put me on the path of knowledge of self. Uh, once I um, had that, I came in contact with the five percenters known as the nation of gods on earth mm -hmm. um, later on um, at the age of 14. And wow. that came about because I was only four blocks away from them. I lived on 129th Street between 5th and Lenox. And then um, around 124th Street um, is where you will find Mecca. So I had a sister who kept telling me that I'm going to introduce you to my God. And I was like, hold up. This is a little bit too personal. <laughs> you know, what you mean by your God? And then she eventually told me, no, I'm, I'm talking about my man. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, so your man is God? Yo, I got to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So at 14, I came aware of, so I was already aware through the biography of Malcolm X, the Nation of Islam, and I got the other branch, Nation of God's Nerf, previously known as the Five Percenters, um, at the age of 14, and my cousin was a five percenter and he was already studying Minister Farrakhan. And so uh, at 14, I would go over to his house. All right. Uh, actually, I was 13 um, at the time. Um, he was 15. So I, we would go over to his house. I would go over to his house, my mom and I, and um, he would have Playboy, Penthouse, Hustler magazines, all of that up under his bed. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> this is New York. So I come back um, about a year and a half later. I was about 15 and all that was replaced with Malcolm X, um, Dr. Khaled Muhammad, who was known as Rashida mm -hmm. um, at that time, um, as well as Minister Farrakhan, Elijah Muhammad tapes. And I was like, what? Oh, man, you got to let me get some of this. So he ended up giving me some of the um, audio tapes by Malcolm X and uh, that was a wrap, you know? So now not only did I have the book or have studied the book, cause I read it, I ended up reading the book three times over the two weeks that I had it. Um, you know, knowing about the five percenters and then having the, you know, the audio tapes. This is, remember this was the mid eighties. This was around 83, 84. Yeah. So, we didn't have a lot of information and Minister Farrakhan was just really getting back on board with the Nation of Islam teachings and going out and um, I guess you can say repopulating the Nation of Islam because it fell apart um, after the death of, of um, Anabi Elijah Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And then Wafdi Muhammad took over who was his son and he changed the name of the Nation of Islam to the Balalian um, group. So therefore Minister Farrakhan in the early eighties um, came out of, I guess, for lack of a better term, retirement and um, reformed the Nation of Islam at that time. So I was uh, blessed or bliss in that sense of uh, having someone who can represent the Nation of Islam. And that was Minister Farrakhan at that time period. Okay. Um, so um, at that point, uh, I began, kept studying. And then at the age of 19, um, I came across the teachings of Dr. Malachi York, who was formerly known as Imam Misa El Hati Halamati. And his information was so profound, even beyond um, the nation in the aspects of that. It was dealing with an actual nation, it was dealing with um, a language, I should say, um, Arabic, Hebrew, so forth and so on. So I continued studying um, Nubic, the Wapian, as it became. Uh, you know, the AEO and different other ways of, I guess you say, transmutation um, of us gaining knowledge from just the answer to Allah, new in Islamic Hebrew days to uh, the covenant, the new covenant, on to becoming, uh, I guess you say, AEO members, et cetera, et cetera, uh, with the holy tablet. Uh, so um, at that time, up until the 1993 is, mm -hmm. is when I met um, Dr. York for the first time on the land when they first moved down to um, um, Edenton, Georgia. Then 
um, 94, I moved down to Atlanta, Georgia after meeting him. And then in 95, the beginning of 95, I, that's when I met Bobby. I think it was February of 1995, I ended up meeting Bobby Hemmett. Um, brother took me to one of his lectures on Clark Atlanta University. And that's when me and Bobby became friends. Um, Cause myself and the other brother in which that I taught, brother Anaz, who also um, was going to Clark Atlanta University, uh, we was answering all the questions in which that Bobby was throwing out to the audience. So he's like, who are these two jokers here? And so um, afterwards, we, we went up and uh, met with him. And um, we was started, you know, we started rolling ever since. And then I think in 96, Bobby ends up giving um, me and on a Nas like half of his library. Mm. Um, so we end up having half of his library. So I end up having half of the books of, you know, that brother Nas end up having. And I guess he was speculating that one of us would begin to start teaching uh, once again. So um, in 97, I end up becoming a radio announcer or DJ on WRFG Community Radio in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. And um, um, I work from the eight to 10 o'clock section of um, time. And we would interview Jewel Procrome um, Bobby Phil Valentine, uh, Dr. Deborah Blair, Brother Bobby Hammett, so forth and so on, all the yeah. greats um, yeah. we were interview. So um, being that I worked at the radio station, uh, they gave, they allowed for me to actually teach. So I began teaching in the basement. So I was able to put up flyers about the classes and everything. And so people would come to the classes. And, um, you know, uh, by 98, 99, I ended up moving back to North Carolina and picked up again teaching. This time I went back to where I graduated from, which was Federal State University um, in Federal, North Carolina, near Fort Bragg. And I began to start teaching in the library there. Uh, once again, and we got up to like over 70 uh, people who would come out to the library in order to hear the information. Uh, so, I mean, we've been traveling ever since as far as this information is concerned and haven't stopped teaching. We've had bookstores, um, the bookstore in which that we had, um, it was myself, Brother Musa, Brother Noah. Um, we had that bookstore from actually from 90, 91, all the way until 96. Mm -hmm. um, and then I came back to North Carolina in 98 and my wife and I opened up another bookstore. Now the first bookstore was called the Hall of Knowledge. Um, the second bookstore that my wife and I opened up was called Cultural Freedom or Culture Freedom, um, which was the 5% terminology, um, you know, which was in 2000. Okay. Um, the summer yeah. of 2000. Um, so um, that's what we did. And, you know, we've been having bookstores ever since. So um, this is our third bookstore now that we, we closed that one down in 2011 and moved. And we reopened um, a bookstore um, about three hours away from where we were. And so um, this one is known as, um, for, I guess you say lack of a better term, uh, uh, juice and more, M O O R, mm -hmm. um, and natural marketplace. So it's a vegan smoothie restaurant, a cafe, and a natural marketplace because you can come in and purchase incense, oils, crystals, herbs, right? Your clothing, conscious clothing, so forth. Everything conscious. So we might a nickname would be everything conscious. <laughs> All right, so um, we opened this um, three years ago. All right, so mm -hmm. in 2018, we opened this. Um, so this is our third, um, my third bookstore or slash um, every, conscious everything that we've opened and we've been moving ever since. Excellent, Roman. Appreciating this. And um... So this is your path, actually, New York right. on the south and 
right. vice versa. Right. All right. And bro, um, you know, uh, Arabic. So when someone's looking through your videos, uh, you're fluent in Arabic. Wasn't when you got on the teachings of uh, Dr. York? Yes. At, at that moment. Mm -hmm. Who was known as Imam Isa Al-Hati Al-Hamati at that mm -hmm. time period. Uh, one of the requisites or requirements in which that we had to learn was Arabic. So, and write Arabic, speak Arabic, you know, um, so have some type of conversation in Arabic. So yes, that's what we utilize. And some people say that he didn't know Arabic or whatever the case is, but I've heard him saying in Arabic. I've heard him, um, I've seen him write in Arabic. I've seen him speak in Arabic. So for someone to say that he doesn't know Arabic is beyond me because that's how I learned Arabic was from the classes, uh -huh. you know? So, um, you know, it's just people, you know, trying to discredit what he has done. And yes, um, I can't speak about what was done in the, in the bedroom and I don't condone anything in which that was done. However, I still um, have to separate the message from the messenger. Yeah. And the message was very profound and it has been able to guide me ever since. And um, that's the same thing with Billy Carson. Billy Carson was also a member or affiliated with Dr. York's teaching. I can go through lists of teachers who are now out here getting the information out mm -hmm. who was once part or affiliated with Dr. York in some shape, form, or fashion, whether they was in the entertainment field, whether they are actors or actresses, whether they mm -hmm. are, I mean, look, Wesley Snipes, you know, uh, I can go on. I mean, it is something in which that you have to look and say, okay, there was some um, contribution in which that was given um, to the world and a profound contribution at that. I got you. And the Trillian, um, I was attracted to, you know, Iber, so Ibru, right? right. Uh, learning from, you know, writing with the, uh, you know, with the form of letterings from right to left. Right. I mean, wow. Uh, it produced something in myself. Could you share, you know, the esoteric, esoteric or metaphysical right. aspect mm -hmm. of you learning Arabic? Right. Well, learning Arabic as well as also Hebrew, because I've, I've studied both um, while um, under Dr. York. Um, writing right to left, you know, it was definitely different in a way that it activates certain aspects of your brain as far as the right hemisphere of the brain. And mm -hmm. being that you were writing in some type of calligraphy, um, that gave you also some similarities to hieroglyphics in that sense. And we both know that from, I know from my research on Arabic and Hebrew, 62% um, and 68% comes from, what well, Arabic and Hebrew comes from the metro nature, um, come from uh, the hieroglyphics. You know, um, the scripts would be known as the Meridic script and the demotic script. And these two scripts is where Arabic and Hebrew stems from. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, um, this is the correlation to these two languages is that it is actually the metro nature that we are speaking, um, you know, as well as writing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I do want to make that link because, uh, you know, uh, breathing, sound, sound of powers, Mm -hmm. uh, for you know the initiates they know it right now uh again with those two languages uh, and with breeding and you know le alif or halef mm -hmm. uh, could you speak or share your knowledge regarding the words of power with those two languages right well um we know that according to both languages they are known as the mother tongue or the mother language um, therefore, they are very connected back to the actual, I guess you would say, mother tongue, which would be hieroglyphics or the metronature. Uh, when we look at 
the science of these various letters, um, like um, Aleph, Lam, Mim, um, you know, which is in Arabic, we see these letters being utilized throughout the Holy Quran. Um, we see um, the connections in the same letters in Hebrew. <laughs> Aleph, <laughs> all right, first letter. You know, um, even in Greek, in which that comes from the Hebrew, and actually the Greek is Hebrew, uh, we see Alpha, all right? Alpha, Aleph, Allah. So we see the connection between those various languages. And of course, uh, we see that um, Ayla or Ila um, or Allah, the connection for the name of God, which stems from um, that first alphabet, um, you know, and matter of fact, alphabet, alpha, there it is right there. Um, Beth or uh, Beth um, means house or part of Bah, you know, within Arabic that connects to, to the house. Mm -hmm. So this is the connection pieces that we're seeing. Now, uh, when you open up the Quran, and you go to the first chapter, it speaks on um, the seven stanzas known as Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha means the opening, um, which actually goes back to the ancient comedic deity or netter, which is Ta or Pata. Pata or Ta means the opener. So they say in, in Arabic that Oh, Fatiha, uh, we got the name Fatima, you know, um, which is Muhammad's daughter, mm -hmm. how, which actually is a form of Mary, all right? Um, you know, that's another story. Yeah. <laughs> but we got the name right there of the Ein principle, which is also another letter that we find is the 16th and the 18th letter within Hebrew in Arabic, Ayn, um, A-Y-N or A-Y-I-N. Um, and these two letters happens to be the ending of the stanzas or sentences in Al-Fatiha, known as the, you have the surah, which is the chapter, and then ayat, which are the sentences. So when they say, um, Bismillah, the rock man, right? That in the ein, that's the ein sound in which that is being propagated, and this and it ends each time with that ein sound, and it opens and activates the seven major chakras in your body. That's what it's symbolic mm -hmm. to. Um, just like the um um Andy Bacor, uh, within Hebrew, when you what you know is the miracle prayer, it opens the particular chakras. Um, you can use the Lord's Prayer or um, the 23rd Psalms. Um, it opens and activates the seven chakras, um, bringing energy down or raising energy up, which is Kundalini, your, inner, your internal power. So we understand that these letters symbolizes that. Um, if you go to a website, um, www.meru.org, M-E-R-U.org, it breaks down to 22 um, Hebrew letters, which actually stems back to Phoenician, and Phoenician is um, the ancient Kemetic uh, uh, Temerian um, hieroglyphic script, um, Metru Metru. Um, so it takes you back to that. There's 22 letters in Phoenician, there's 22 letter, Hebrew letters, um, um, of course. So it takes us back to the number 22. The number hmm. 22 symbolizes um, if you actually understand what's going on, the number 22 symbolizes the 22 bones in your head, which means the master builder. There's 22 um, on bones in your head that makes up the head, 22 bones. So that's where these 22 um, letters actually stem from is talking about the 22 bones in which that makes up your head. Um, your skull. And remember, Jesus was crucified on Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. 
all right? Not a actual mountain in which that we've been taught and trained to literalize, but it was actually talking about when you raise Kukulini, your lower nature, your ego is crucified. Um, it is dead or murdered in that sense because you have you have to murder the four devils, as they say, within the 5% or nation of um, God's and earth teaching mm -hmm. um, in the justice lesson. So we have to understand that these um, sciences is very metaphysical and esoteric, and we just have to take it back to its original um, origin instead of just saying, okay, there's 22 Hebrew letters. Okay, well, what is that connected to? What did it, what's the origin of it? You know, uh, you know, I, I look for deeper connections, and that's why I say I'm the connector, because I look for deeper connections in whatever um, I'm teaching. I don't I don't want to just say, well, there's 22 Hebrew letters, okay, and that's it, and then leave a person out there just saying, okay, it's 22 Hebrew letters. No, those letter scripts or the way in which that they are designed comes from the 22 pieces in which that the skull or the brain um, um, covering is made up from. Got you, doctor. And uh, speaking of this, uh, I know that you know uh, we won't share any you know sound words of power that may be reserved for a certain uh, degrees. But um, whenever that it can be, you know, uh, uh, la merde, uh, bet, ein. Well, speaking of which. You know, mm -hmm. people, you know, the uh, the nail fight might say, oh, it's only words of this, but right. those sounds, those sounds are give, connecting, you know what right, I'm saying? So, right, right. I give you a good um example. Like yeah. we just said with the ein sound, the ein sound activates the pineal gland in your brain. So it activates the seven chakras, which the pineal gland acts as a step down transform of cosmic electromagnetic energy. That energy transfers from the pineal gland to the pituitary gland, from the pituitary gland to the thyroid gland, thyroid gland to the thymus gland, thymus gland to the spleen, pancreas, and the adrenal glands, and then um, down to the prostate gland and the testes in the man, mm. the uterus and the ovaries in the woman. So when you say, I... The ein sound helps to act with the pineal gland. It's the same as saying I. The I sound. So it activates the pineal gland, which sits underneath those 22 bones of protection, um, correlating also to the 22 amino acids in which that makes up your physical body composition. So the number 22 is very important. All right. Even when you study numerology, number 22 is the master builder number. Repeat that again, doctor. The number 22 within numerology, geomantria, is known as the master builder number. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're going to uh, build on this. So um, shout out to my father, right? Because... Uh, he did share to me some words of power that with sound, right? And right. with, you know, um, creates a portal, let's say for mm -hmm. protection. So you right. can leave right. your house, you know, wherever you have to go, come back. Um, please share, uh, uh, you know, because you're my elder. So please share, uh, brother, what you can, what you're allowed on this science mm -hmm. of you know using sounds sound, for right yeah, for creating right. whatsoever mm -hmm. yeah all right um um scientist luke what he did was um he's a scientist from out of france um i can't remember his last name but um his name is um luke l-u-c and um he was very intricate in finding out that the frequency for DNA is seven hertz. Seven hertz. All right. Now seven is the uh, is the letter G within um, the alphabet, and G, of course, is symbolized within Freemasonry 
in the center of the ring, standing for God and geometry, et cetera. Um, because of course, in which that surrounds the G is the compass in the square, mm -hmm. uh, which means meets and bounds, all right? Symbolic to meets and bounds. Um, the circumference of yourself, of your actions, of your ways, of your behavior, putting a, a cap on your ego, mastering and polishing off um, that square, um, you know, um, into from 360 degrees of a square to becoming 360 degrees of a circle. All right, both equal 360 degrees. However, they have a different shape. The number four, which is symbolic to the square, symbolizes um, the foundation in which that you want. 360 degrees of a circle symbolizes circumference and um, the never ending story of life, immortality, eternity, um, so forth and so on. So when we look at the particular sounds, um, um, Dr. Luke, he was able to. Um, have DNA strands in water. And then he had DNA strands, well, he didn't, he, ha he didn't have any DNA strands in another glass of water. But at seven hertz, DNA strands in the glass in which that did not have strands in it previously began to form and have strands in it. So it was at seven hertz that the multiplication or the cloning experience, I guess you can say, of life was introduced at seven hertz. Um, so that means frequency, it means vibration. So we're looking at words is a known fact within um, what is called epigenetics, which is popularized by Bruce Lipton, Dr. Bruce Lipton. He states, oh, Montanier, that's the name, Luke Montanier, all right, Dr. Luke Montanier. But um, Dr. Bruce Lipton, what he did was with epigenetics was to get people to understand that sound has an effect upon the DNA and that DNA is not rigid, but is malleable. It can be formed in shape, in fact, hmm. by sound. Wow. Say that again, right? doctor. Say that again, doctor. Yes. DNA is not fix it can be malleable it can be um um formed and shaped by sound so um we know that your dna is formed and shaped by your mother and father your environment but you as the responsible individual for life as you are living this life have the ability to form dna based on your positive attitude and behavior and action, based upon your prayers, your decrees, your affirmations, all right? Yeah. So that means when we get to these particular sounds of healing, for example, there's seven major sounds of healing as we broke down the I sound for the crown chakra pineal gland, the E sound, for the pituitary gland, the A sound for your thyroid, parathyroid glands, the A sound, A-H sound for your thymus gland and heart and lungs, your um, H-A-H, ha sound for your kidneys and spleen pancreas, mm -hmm. um, the S-H sound for your liver, all right? The O sound, um, also the K-A-H sound, um, helps also with the kidneys, all right? Um, the O sound helps with the digestive system, all right? Just uh, small and large intestines and the colon. The U sound helps with the genitalia, or known as your reproductive organs. So these seven sounds help. So anytime that you are able to put words together, um, whether it's coming from the hieroglyphics, which is the metronature, coming from Phoenician, coming from Hebrew, coming from um, Arabic, coming from Greek, um, these are the more ancient uh, languages in which that we can utilize the sounds of healing 
um, utilizing these particular uh, vowels. That's why they are called vowels. Um, notice I said A-E-I-O-U, and then the sometimes Y is the Y sound hits you at the back of your head, which is known as the medulla oblongata. So these particular mm. sounds help to resonate um, and help to clear blockages um, from your chakras, which is known as your endocrine glands. It helps to regulate your hormones, get you back in hormonal balance. This is the key to long life and longevity upon planet Earth, a good life, because it helps you to be healthy, mm. all right? So um, these are the sounds of healing. So um, I, you will recite that seven times. It helps to activate the pineal gland. Why helps to activate the medulla um, oblongata. E helps to activate the pituitary gland. A, the A sign helps to produce or activate the thyroid and parathyroid gland. Uh, helps with the thymus gland, heart, and the lungs. Uh, right. With the solar plexus. All right, in particular, the spleen and the pancreas. Go helps with the kidneys, the adrenal glands. And then, oh, the O sound. Even when, as a child, we had a tummy, we would go to our mom or dad and say, oh, oh. The O sound always was the sound in which that helped us to feel better when we had a tummy ache. It hasn't changed. We use it now consciously. Oh, the O sound helps to remove blockages mm. from the digestive system. And then, of course, the U sound, U, helps with removing blockages from the genitalia slash reproductive organs. So these particular sounds um, helps to remove blockages so that you can stay in harmony um, in the state of what they know as the law of Mayat. Wow. Amazing, Dr. Aleem, man. So you heard Dr. Aleem. So, you know, son of powers, they're not uh, something to, you know, to neglect. Right. Uh, you know, there should be implanting in your daily, you know, activities. Right. You Each know? one should be recited seven times as you go through. So you heard the doctor, you know, re you said it seven times. So, Dr. Aleem, now we're going to make a smooth transition. So, with that science of, science of sound of power. So, I'm going to use that link as a bridge masonry. Mm, sometimes, you know, from the indigenous realm, it's not well, you know, comprehend, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but me personally, it's by, you know, doing a meditation connecting me to the Lara constellation that I saw, uh, how it was bringing. So let's make that switch now. Seven golden rays of Peru, the indigenous cosmic golden ray order, Melchi Sedek. Yes. Uh, go ahead, doctor. Yeah. All right. Melchizedek within the ancient comedic um, system would be Marku Sutek. Marku is Heru, Heru Marku is the name of Heru. Sutek is the name of Set. This is when you have combined the lower self and the higher self, and it now is just simply one self. This is a law in man in which that is taught within um, the more science temple of America. Um, on the walls of ancient Kemet, the Metu Netu symbol is Heru, on the left-hand side, actually would be the right-hand side if you're facing outward, and set on the right-hand side, left-hand side if you're facing outward. And you'll see them um, along what looks like some type of pole, pulling a rope. Um, that pole is actually your spinal column. That bottom piece in which that they have their foot on symbolizes the sacral bone in which that, that is the indwelling spirit. The Kundalini dwells there. Symbolic to the tying of it is talking about not allowing your ego to overcome your higher self. Um, this is 
what that is symbolic to, um, being that now Hiru and Set has become one. Hiru Malkusutek becomes Melchizedek within the Bible, becomes um, El Kadir or El Kadar within the Holy Quran, so um, within the um, Holy Quran. Um, so um, we see that these connectors, um, you know, even if you get the Bible, um, it speaks about in the book of Hebrews, mm -hmm. Melchizedek. Um, in particular, the uh, um, fifth chapter through the seventh chapter. And it says that even Jesus was after the order of Melchizedek. So um, in the Mormons, they have an order of Melchizedek. In the um, Jehovah Witnesses, they have a order of the Melchizedek. So Melchizedek is very important as it, the ancient mystery school is known as Marku Hiru Sutek or Hiru Marku Sutek, which symbolizes the mastering of the lower and higher self. Um, that become known as Samatawi um, within the ancient Kemetic script. It also known within um, the, uh, I guess you said, the old time religion within the Holy Quran Circle 7. It's also known as the everlasting gospel. <laughs> um, um, these are all terms in which that if you read these particular books or study the Bible, the Quran, uh, the Bahá'í Gita, the Hispanishad, the, uh, the Marapaba, the, uh, uh, the Apocrypha, the Lord's books of the Bible, uh, began books of Eden. Uh, the Gnostic scripts or texts, you know, all these books speaks about the same exact thing over and over again, but people are not getting it. They believe that it's literal and, and historical when it's ac actually esoteric, um, terical and metaphysical, mm -hmm. you know? So this is what we have to come to the conclusion on because it doesn't help us to think something happened 4,000 years ago. Moses split the Red Sea 4,000 years ago. What will that story do for you today? It won't do anything for you unless you decode it metaphysically and right. understand is that, oh, okay, Moses symbolizes, the pole on which that Moses has symbolizes my spinal cord. Oh, the Red Sea symbolizes my bloodstream, which symbolizes the to and fro pumping action of the heart itself. Moses symbolized being drawn forth from water, um, ikata, or education, which means basically being drawn forth from me, from out of me, which means to pull what is inside of me out so that it can bloom and blossom and make some trans, um, trans um, mutation for others who's in my surrounding. Um, this is what the story of Moses is symbolic to. Drawing um, um, in the book of Exodus, um, taking these people from out of Egypt into um, the land of Canaan, you know, um, into uh, wilderness uh, where he was there for 40 years, um, you know, so forth and so on. And then yeah. you had manna falling and this manna symbolizes actually prana or pranic energy, you know, and the 40 years is symbolic to the same as we will find um, with the um, in Genesis of Noah of the 40 days and 40 nights, symbolic to the 40 weeks in which that a child is born, you know, going into the 10th month, you know, nine month child is born during that time period. Um, so this is all symbolic. It's talking about our transfiguration. Um, once we begin to start understanding the real keys in which that um, the Bible, the Holy Quran, and these various scriptures are talking about. Well said, Dr. Alim. And to, you know, we're going to dive still with that same uh, structure here. So, um, you know, order of uh, Melchizedek. So, I'm looking at the vortex, right? So uh, Amaru Mil, uh, or uh, you know the the wonders below and the Lake Titicaca, you know. So, mm -hmm. uh, so you have a lot of you know uh, higher science over there, 
right? Or throughout actually the uh, the uh, throughout the uh, the continent. So right. when we look at you know what's being a more, but not the historical or you know popular, but really the organic cosmic or even galactic presence, you know. So we have people that saying like, you know what? Uh, I'm coming to this realm, but I've been other places, you know, and things with how ancient civilization always had a an anchor point with different uh, constellation. Would you be able to share your knowledge on this, uh, the Trelin? You know, the intervention of the more, but more of the, uh, you know, uh, the being coming through here, you know, so. Please uh, expand on this, Dr. Lee. Well, we see that the star constellation Orion and the word Orion means heaven within the Greek on um, Greco-Latin. Um, so we, we know that when we look up and it's in the shape of a, as they say, of a man with his dog, which the dog would be the star constellation Sirius. So you have to combine those two constellations Sirius Orion, and this is the star constellation, which that according to the Dogon, who was the ancient astrologers and astronomers in, in, in Kemet, in Tamari, Tamaray, um, over 8,000 years ago, before they moved into what we call now Mali with Timbuktu, um, which they also helped to form. Um, we see that their ancient information, um, being that they were some of the original Egyptians, um, during that time period, who were the astrologers, meaning that they was part of the ancient mystery school. Uh, they was part of Sematawi. Um, they was part of what we call now the Order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. And according to them, they state specifically that we came from the star constellation Sirius. All right? So um, this is no doubt because all of the ancient mystery schools, whether you are a Rosicrucian, a Mason, or a Starian, whatever the case is, uh, whether you are part of the OTO, part of the Golden Dawn, they all speak about the blazing star. The Quran itself in chapter 53, Surah 53, I think it's Ayat 102, 103, it says that Sirius is the mighty star of Allah. So this mighty star of Allah is Sirius. Sirius is the most spoken about star. And it says that this is the most spiritual star and it has the most influential um, aspects on our lives is this star Sirius. This is the star that um, even when Christians practice Christmas, Christmas, they put the star on top of the tree. That star on the top symbolizes Sirius. All right. So Sirius uh -huh. is the most influential star in our lives. And this is the star in which that is said that when we um, pass human form and you see this bright light at the end of the tunnel, that is the light in which that you see is the star constellation Sirius, in particular what is known as Sirius A. We are actually part of the Sirius B constellation. Um, or uh, a spear. Um, and then we have Nubiru in which that is coming through, which is actually um, Sirius C, which is known as Emiya. All right, so that, again, have, Dr. Alim, that one. Yes, we have Nubiru, which is said to be the planet of the crossing, according to Zachariah Ascension, but it's not a planet, it actually is a star. And that star is known as Emiya, which is. Sirius C, you have Ziggy Tolo, Polo um, Tolo, um, and Emiya. And these Sirius A, Sirius B, Sirius C. Sirius C is now here, coming around our planet and is near our sun. And this only happens every 3,600 years. So Zachariah Ascension was correct on that particular part. However, he had people believing that it was a planet is not a planet. It is actually um, um, an object, what we call Sirius C, in which that is now come, because we are still part of this Sirius constellation because our sun was born from out of Sirius 
um, B, implosion. So our son is the child of Sirius B. And this is the story of our dollar broth breaking forth from the mother goddess principle known as Sophia, which is within the Gnostic text. Mm -hmm. Well said, Dr. Aline. Indeed. Well said. So uh, you heard Dr. Aline. I mean, um, Dr. Aline, for anyone, especially indigenous people, you know, raising their vibration and now tapping to their galactic, you know what I'm saying, the heritage or connection, because uh, even though I'm still here, I'm still connected over there, and, right. you know, simultaneously. What's your, uh, what's your advice, Dr. Aline, in order to not ease, but, you know, uh, guide their journey to identify and to absorb or to, you know, rediscover this awareness with, of themselves, basically? Everything comes through the science of breath. So um, based on my teachings and what I've been taught, um, the breath is the mind in action. So therefore, if you want to control your mind, you must learn how to breathe, all right? Um, normally, if you find a person who is in a uh, traumatic experience or condition or situation, they breathe hard, all right? That is hyperventilating themselves. So by lowering your breath, you now come back into a calm state. Now you can think. When you're hyperventilating, you can't think. You're, you're running on emotion. Mm -hmm. And emotions make a um, good servant, but a poor master. That's what the ancient Egyptians, comedic people state. That emotions make good servants, but a poor master. So you can't use your emotions. Um, you have to use rationality. You have to use your mind. And the only way to get back in tune with your um, higher mental state and think properly is by way of the mastery of breath. So once right. again, the breath is the science of not just life. Because remember, we can go without food for 30 days or more. We can go without water for a week or two. But you can only go about three to six minutes without the breath. So the breath is the most important aspect of our life. All right. Most people got it twisted. You know, they believe that, um, you know, they, they got to have food. They got to have water, you know. But yet these things you can go um, weeks without. But you can't go a week without the breath. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got you. And um before going on, because I do want to, um, we still have some few, a few minutes before the Q&A, so breath, uh, Qigong, all right? right. So right. I'm just going to share this, all okay. right? This is actually a video from 2014. So I won't put the volume, but I'm just going to put, you know, the movement or the mutuduri uh, for the ones that, you know, uh, were studying uh, Bujikan. So this was from the, uh, the video, Dr. Alimbe teaches the sign of, yeah, exactly. The sign of bread to brother panic. All mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stop it. So you mentioned Dr. Alim, the vital signs of breathing in here. You know, you were seeing your movement. So would you be able to share the esoteric concept of Qigong? Right. Um, Qigong is over 2,000 years old um, to 4,000 years old. Um, it actually is on the walls of ancient Kemet. You will see Akhenaten and his wife Nefertiti. Akhenaten's name also is Amenhotep IV. Um, but he's also known as Unc Unten. And you would see them with their hands being raised to the sun in various positions, like this, like this, you know, so forth and so on. Those are Qigong moves, all right? And what he was teaching was what we would call Qigong almost 4,000 years ago, all right? We had Qigong 
fourth, which is martial arts, actually you were seeing on the walls. And um, um, actually, if you get the book called Karate um, by one of the grand masters from Korea, he actually um, break down the fact, uh, I believe he was from Korea or either Japan, but he breaks down the fact, but it's, the book was called Karate. And um, he breaks down the fact that the ancient Egyptians had martial arts first, or the oldest aspects of martial arts came from the ancient Egyptians, Kamek, Tamerian, whatever name that we want to use. And it's still on the walls to this very day. And he shows this, that this is the oldest. And so we had martial arts 4,000 years ago and Akhenaten um, bought the science of Qigong um, in Tai Chi um, in which that um, Bodhidharma gets this information um, carried because he's from the lineage of the Kushites, um, you know, mm. from out of Africa into India. And then he takes it into the monastery known as the Charlene Temple. Um, the monks was falling asleep there. So what happened is, is that he would begin to start teaching the monks Qigong and Tai Chi exercises in order to keep them woke, which was known as moving, um, breathing exercises. This is where you get the word Qigong, which means cultivating life force energy. All right. So yeah. this is what he would teach them. And so now um, martial arts in Shaolin is where everybody want to go who want to learn martial arts. They want to know um, these sciences, but this came from Bodhidharma, um, mm -hmm. who was in India. He was part of the Tamil people or family line, which was Kushite. This is where you get the Indo-Kushite people from, but they came from out of Ethiopia. And the Ethiopian was known to be the um, ancient priesthood of the Egyptians, all right, or mm -hmm. Kemites or Tamarian people. So the same information that is on the walls 2000 years before China, receive martial arts. Right. Because martial arts is only about 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years old in China, 4,000 years old in Africa. Okay? I'm among the Kishites. So, um, whether you're talking about wrestling, whether you're talking about archery, um, pole um, stick fighting, whether you're talking about various movements such as Qigong, Tai Chi, um, all this was already taught thousands of years ago in Africa. So we are simply coming back into knowledge of self and regaining our ancient information because the people around the world who was from us kept certain parts of it. So now it's time for us to gather the pieces once again. Right, right. And with that being said, uh, would you please share a breathing techniques, let's say that one would be able to do every morning? as a way to salute the forces and in himself, within himself as well. Right, so you will want to take your hands, place them on your knees, sit with your back straight, and you wanna breathe in for a count of six, hold it for three seconds, breathe out for six seconds, and then hold it again for three seconds. That is known as pranic breathing, part of the pranayama um, breathing techniques. So you would breathe in. What that does is bring more prana into your auric field, into your chakras, and thus producing harmony within your endocrine gland, your chakra system. Um, so therefore, that is one of the most potent um, breathing techniques that you can do every morning and every um, uh, three hours before going to sleep. Mm -hmm. So every morning upon waking up and every night, um, three hours before going to sleep. Thank you, Dr. Alim, for this drill. So you heard you heard uh, Alim El Bay on this. So you know, precious again, you know, uh, techniques. All right, dealing with subtle energies. Right. Uh, now, before open up the Q and A, so I do want to share this to the people. You won't be long. So these are testimonies. All right. So from v several individuals. All right, so I'm just gonna read probably the first two ones or Kadira. I tried, I tried K 
Kamu or ancient healing, joring ointment, and it removed muckus from my breast that I no idea was there. Now I have a beauty mark that seems to fade monthly. So glad muckus is out after all, but out then it is. Moorish, Moorish women have large cases of breast cancer that is fatal. Tut Anku, thank you in Washita for change for the better. So this one, you have also Jeff Moore. So you and Dr. Elby share a way, remove cancer and disease tissue from my body. After reading your research material and my own, I decided to try the Kamwar ancient healing during ointment. All right, so I'm gonna stop it here. So there's several testimonies, all right, with from the people that tried uh, Dr. Alim's uh, healing products. So you're a shaman healer. Shaman healer to be one that means you were that was part of your mission when you came to this realm, right? Right. Because uh, now you are like in the uh, Carolina territory, but you do have that Washita, you know what I'm saying? Energy or forces. Uh, any connection, Aleem, for the one that may not know you with the ancestral, uh, I'm going to say, not Omar, but the ancestral mission that you were gave to bring this forward today to the people. Right. Um, I was nine years old when I began to start studying what we now refer to as metaphysics, um, UFOs, um, lost islands, such as Atlantis and Lemuria, um, ghosts, dinosaurs, and so forth and so on. That was mm -hmm. always my interest um, growing up, especially at nine years old. Um, it was then when my mom purchased for me the Time Life magazine books. This is the first edition, not the second one, so which that comes out 10 years later in 1987, yeah. um, in which that you can often read about on Wikipedia. But they had an earlier edition in which that came out um, in 1977, 78. I got them in 78 at nine years old. And these books um, brought me a lot of comfort because at nine years old, I seen UFOs. In particular, a UFO hovered over the top of my head about 100 to 150 yards over the top of my head to just the slight right. Um, and the lights went in and out around it in the colors of Roy G. Biv, red, um, um, red, orange, yellow, um, uh, green, blue, indigo, and violet, Roy G. Biv, um, around in the circle around the ship. So uh, being that I seen that, you know, at nine, and then earlier I seen ghosts at the age of five years old, I was always tuned into other dimensions in which that apparently no one wanted to talk about, or if they did, I didn't see them talking about it until later time. I was 19. Uh, when I um, got with Dr. York, um, mm -hmm. of course, I read about the mother plane, you know, coming from the autobiography of Malcolm X and, you know, and some of the other lessons from the Nation of Gods and Earth or known as the Papa Sinners at that time. So I knew about the mother plane and different things like that. But this is where um, this fascination comes in at, uh, you know, so it's been a life um purpose life mission and so i didn't know why i was collecting all this information i didn't know that later on i would actually use this information to help uplift fallen humanity um uplift myself um mainly is by knowing thyself so um this is what happened mm, i got you so then again if you go on dr dr alim el beso d a d r a l i -A. M E L B E Y dot com. All right. So you've been able to see Dr. Alim's uh, classes, uh, classes on Reiki, Qigong. Uh, please name it more, uh, Doctor. Other classes that you teach that's available on your website. Um, we teach herbalism. 
-hmm. Pranic healing, Qigong, Tai Chi, Reiki one, two, and three, and Reiki Grandmaster level. We also teach um, on crystals, the stones, precious gems, minerals. Uh, We teach on vitamins, minerals, as well as also nutrition. Um, I am a natural, um, naturopathic doctor. So we teach on those levels as well as also um, a holistic and wellness doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, so we teach on these various sciences in order to help um, bring together and heal our people. Yeah. You know, bring this information together and heal our people is the main thing. All right. So we've been having a chat conversation and knowing about uh, Dr. Allenby, all right, over the uh, past uh, one hour. So Indeed. these times, if you hear and you listen to, to the brother, what he has to say is because, you know, it's part of your path actually to, you know, raise your vibration and develop on your, I'm going to say your cosmic purpose while you're here. So Dr. Alim, man, thank you. Uh, well appreciated. And just to let you know, your work is tremendous and your influence as well. You, you know what I'm saying? So, appreciate that. Uh, no one can say that, you know, they know a lot, but, you know, even someone who's striving to learn whatsoever, uh, we learning a lot from you. You know what I'm saying? So, that's a uh, remarkable. I'm going to say unify presence, man, in here. And among us. Appreciate, Appreciate that, God. Thank you. So you, you heard Dr. Alim. So his website, Dr. Alim L-B, D-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y.com. Uh, Brother Alim, uh, there's so much stuff that I know the people and I would like to, you know, I'm sent to tackle. So we would appreciate probably, you know, whenever you'll be able to to build again and learn out of your experience, testimonies, all right? No doubt. So, Definitely. Whenever you need for me to come back on, I'm here. All right. So I'm going to share the... Uh, no, actually, uh, I'm going to share you the, uh, the website, but uh, you can okay. contact Dr. Aline, you know, if you want to have classes, questions, right. uh, teachings. Actually, me personally, Dr. Aline, I do want to, you know, um, build on my uh, Qigong. So you're definitely okay. going to hear from me. All right. Okay. No doubt. So words of wisdom before we close this. Um, words of wisdom is uh, know thyself. First instruction of when you open the Moorish Holy Quran Circle 7. Know thyself. It permeated all over Egypt above the doors in which that you will enter into, which is symbolic to the ancient mystery school known as Sematawi. The symbol of that entrance is the sun disc with the wings, which is the top part of the caduceus or the uraeus, which symbolizes the healing. And this is what all this information, the, up, the uplifting of fallen humanity is talking about bringing forth a healing to the nations. And that's what our job and that's what we're here to do. Peace. Peace, Islam. So once again, Islam. session 24 with Dr. Asaru, new Tupac Alim El Bay. Thank you, brother. Well appreciated. Thank you, brother. Peace. Peace. Peace.